Hi everyone and welcome. This is Inside Israeli Basketball. Inside Israeli basketball is brought to you by Israel. Seeing is believing. For Maccabi Haifa, a long season with much to overcome. There were, however, some good moments and players who were able to push themselves to some nice accomplishments. It all started back in October with training camp. <laughs> After ending the previous season on a high note, Maccabi Haifa entered this year with high hopes and expectations. Training camp featured the return of some familiar faces, including Tyler Wilkerson, Avi Ben Shimol, and rising star Sylvan Landisberg. Joining them, an internationally experienced veteran in Carlos Powell, and Sean Williams, an NBA center looking to play in Israel during the lockout. The season started out promising, but when the NBA lockout ended, many players around the league returned to their former teams. For Maccabi Haifa, the loss of Sean Williams was difficult to overcome, but the team still had an exciting season with great performances from their star players. The man to fill in at center was Jeremy Smith. The former Georgia Tech player was signed mid-season and had to quickly adjust to his new surroundings. His experience playing in Latin America over the last two years helped him to contribute to the team right away. Tyler Wilkerson has been a rock in the post for Maccabi Haifa since joining the team last year. This season, he led the team in rebounds and was second in scoring. Sylvan Landisberg was top contender for league MVP all season. He led the team in scoring in nearly every game, including an amazing 35-point performance in the Week 5 win against Natanya. He finished tied for second in the Super League with 20.7 points per game. After a fantastic year in the Super League, Sylvan looks to take a shot at making it into the NBA next season. The organization is now gearing up for next season. Their top priority? Find a head coach. They did just that with the recent hiring of Brad Greenberg. He's the first ever head coach in Israel to have served as an NBA assistant coach, NBA general manager, and the NCAA Division I head coach. In addition to a new coach, Maccabi Haifa has bolstered their roster with the signing of two new players. Center Idoku Jikaro is returning to Haifa, where he formerly played two seasons in 2008 and 2009. The Israeli veteran has played 15 seasons in the Super League and brings intensity and a leadership presence to the game. The team also signed former NBA swingman Donta Smith. After playing two seasons for the Atlanta Hawks, Smith has built international experience playing in Bulgaria, Venezuela, and most recently, Puerto Rico. The organization is looking forward to the upcoming season with the excitement around the new Ormema Arena. The team has also scheduled two exhibition games in the U.S. against the NBA's Minnesota Timberwolves and the Golden State Warriors. With all of the buzz around the team, Haifa has high hopes for an exciting and successful season. Maccabi Haifa has lots to look forward to next year, starting with the grand opening of their spectacular new home court. Here's a look at how construction is progressing at Haifa's Rumema Arena. So inside everything is uh, quite finished except the chairs and everything and of course uh, the finishing of everything but uh, other than that, the offices around. The main job is the finishing now. It's not uh, completely done, but there is uh, still work to do. Everything's supposed to be ready all together. Okay. okay. I see many workers are working here. Uh, it's supposed to be ready uh, around uh, August. It has been a two-year construction project, and when completed, the new Mema Arena will have a seating capacity of 5,000, becoming the second largest indoor arena in Israel. So actually the, the entrance will be from here and the cashier office and ticket office will be on the side but everybody will get inside. This is here. the main entrance to the building. 
I see the parquet is uh, ready to be installed here. Uh, everything is ready for the parquet, for the wood. The concrete for the wooden decking is ready. Now the, the, the put the concrete and smooth it, like you can see. Mm -hmm. The stands, the what stands the are stands? now being prepared for color. Uh -huh. and, uh, so smooth. actually they added this stand uh, behind uh, quite fast because last time we were here it was not built yet. The next step after the color is the, is the chairs, of course, and uh, starting to finish it. The core design will be similar to that of the TD Garden, home of the Boston Celtics. The facility will also feature a luxurious VIP room. Uh, this is uh, the VIP guide, this is the VIP section. Uh, uh, they're going to come and eat here uh, during the halftime and everything, and there is a kitchen over there also. Mm -hmm. What is uh, the state here? Uh, how much time is it supposed to... As you can see, the, the flooring is... Starting they're, putting the floor. they're putting the floor now, the, the walls are ready for color, soon to be finished properly. So, this is going to be our new home. It's your new home and uh, it's going to be a very, very nice home. So prepare for next season because you you're going to have the best arena in Israel and uh, it's soon to be ready. Yeah, we can see this and we are uh, waiting for this and participating. We're going to participate in a beautiful arena and uh, we are looking forward for this. Thank you very much. You're welcome. A champion has been crowned in the Super League. Was Maccabi Tel Aviv able to defend their title? Find out in our Final Four recap when we come back. Inside Israeli basketball is brought to you by Israel. Seeing is believing. The road to the Final Four featured a huge surprise. Number seven seed Maccabi Ashdod became this year's Cinderella story after defeating the number two seed Galil Geboa three games to one. Apol Holon also upset perennial contender Jerusalem in their best out of five series. Favored Rishon Lutzion lost the first two games of its series with Ashkelon, but came all the way back to win a decisive Game 5 and advance to the semis. The heavy favorite Maccabi Tel Aviv easily took care of its business, sweeping Habika in three straight games. In the first semifinal game, the Cinderella Ashdod team faced off against an exhausted Rishon Lutzion. Ashdod trailed by two points at halftime, but made a 28-17 run in the third quarter, gaining a secure lead it would not relinquish. Four Maccabi Ashdod players scored in double figures. Guard Robbie Bostain stepped up and scored 16 points, along with six rebounds and four assists. Josh Carter also netted 16, and American forward Alex Tyus at the University of Florida, he chipped in with eight points and 15 rebounds. In the end, Ashdod defeated Rishon 75-68, advancing to their first ever championship game. In the other semifinal, Maccabi Tel Aviv blew out Hapoel Halon. 
Maccabi dominated down low, scoring 60 of its points in the paint compared to Halon's 26. Five Maccabi Tel Aviv players scored in double figures. American swingman Devin Smith led the way with 19 points and 8 rebounds. And Israeli guard Yogi Abachayon accounted for 18 points, 6 rebounds, and 4 assists. The final was a typical David versus Goliath matchup. However, Ashdod knew they had a chance, having been one of only two teams to beat Tel Aviv in the regular season this year. The first half was mostly controlled by Tel Aviv. Ashdod improved in the third quarter, but it wasn't enough to overcome the huge deficit. Yogeba Chayon led the way again for Maccabi, with 10 assists to go along with 10 points, while Keith Langford scored a team-high 16 points. Maccabi nailed an amazing 15 three-pointers. Tyus scored 16 points for Ashdod, but it wasn't enough as Maccabi Tel Aviv breezed to an 83-63 victory, defending their title and winning their 50th championship. The end of every season brings change. Players who have grown close are separated as they depart for different destinations across the globe. What they have left are friendships formed and memories. With the season being tough, I think a lot of the guys are ready to kind of go home for summer, come back and start fresh, but you realize that this is the last time that this group of players will be playing together. And it's something that you think about, will, will you keep in touch with the guys? And I'd like to kind of keep these friendships going for a couple years. This is not packing Mexico style, this is packing more like a more like a mother, you know, I can, I can take my time and, and fold everything up and, and put it in my bag as, as my wife or my mom would, would want me to. I had to literally pack for Israel in 10 minutes. I was leaving Mexico. I had to gather my hotel room up and throw everything, throw my life in, a, in two bags and a backpack within 10 minutes and I had to shoot off to the airport. When I first came to Israel, this was the first place I went to see my new apartment. It was the first time I uh, lived by myself without roommates. So I was kind of excited to the experience of living by myself. I think it's a great country and a, gr a great place to come play basketball. As this year went on, I got more comfortable and kind of felt less like a visitor and more like Haifa was my home. I love it here, great food. Uh, you have a beach five minutes up the road. Um, very personable people. I really, my, my wife enjoyed herself when she was here. I've had a, I've had a really good time. So leaving's gonna be tough because I'm in a place that I like. I'm comfortable here. I've made a whole bunch of friends and kind of next year's up in the air to what really is gonna happen and where I'll be. This is work for us. This is a business trip for us, so um, when you're here and you're away from so long, you have to have people around you that, are, that will keep a smile on your face. I hung out a lot with Sylvan and Tyler, um, as well with the Israelis and Avi, Daniel, Tamir, and Guy, and um, we do a whole bunch of things. We go, go to the movies, go to someone's house, kind of just hang out, play video games, um, go to the pubs, um, just be social, and kind of we had a lot of fun doing that. I'm just speechless when I think of, 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 of Avi. He, he's kept me laughing in the locker room, on the floor, in practice. You have to have people around you that are gonna, that are gonna make you laugh and make it more like a home, a home type setting. So it's, it's very important. It was a lot of fun kind of to see the, the this places like Caesarea and the old city and the Dead Sea and it kind of, uh, it made it tough I'll remember for the rest of my life historical places that I saw in Israel. Before coming here, you think magical is something like Disney World or Disneyland or Six Flags, but it's nothing like seeing the place where Jesus was born or the place where Jesus lived in Nazareth, things of that nature. As much as I don't want to leave, I'm ready for summer and to go home and kind of have a little vacation. I'm gonna work out, work on my game, and I um, help, help run a basketball camp in Toronto. Very excited to go home and see my family, spend time with my family. But it's, it's the same mentality, go home, uh, 
work my butt off in the summertime, train, uh, get ready for next season. Coming up, Maccabi Haifa takes a break from the court and heads to the ballpark to meet Team Israel as they get ready for the World Baseball Classic. I don't think too many people realize that Israel is producing some of the best wines in the world. In Israel we've been making wine for 5,000 years. In the last 20 years or so it's turned out to be rather good. In the last 10 years there's been an absolute wine revolution. Next year, Israel will participate in the World Baseball Classic Qualifier for the first time. Israel's national team plays and practices year-round in Tel Aviv, and some of Maccabi Haifa's players took a drive to see what baseball in Israel was like. Of course, it wasn't long before watching became participating. The IAB is an ambitious organization, and of course we want to be you know, as far ahead as possible in terms of developing the sports in Israel. We want to have uh, as many players as possible, uh, especially in the higher levels. We're always looking for this tipping point, like uh, this event that would uh, transform baseball in Israel into something much bigger and much more prosperous. And the good thing about always looking for the, uh, you know, the next big thing is that even if it does not turn out to be this one, you can always look to have another year and then say that would be the game changer in terms of Israeli baseball. This is our field, this is Petah Tikva, this is Israeli baseball. So we've been playing baseball here in Israel for about 20 years. Yeah. Um, and we're looking for our, our guy who can push baseball forward. Israel was invited uh, last year, was invited six months ago to the World Baseball Classic. Yeah. We're going to put up a team for the World Baseball Classic qualifiers. They've got the new heritage rule in the World Baseball Classic, which means that anybody who's Jewish can play for Team Israel. You don't have to be Israeli, you don't have to have Israeli citizenship, you just have to be Jewish. Nice. Which means basically that uh, there's there were ten major leaguers who were Jewish in the, in the major leagues this year. Yeah. Kevin Euclid, Ryan Braun is yeah. the MVP. Um, all these guys can play for Team Israel. That's Kinsler, nice. Feldman, they can all play for Team Israel, and they're going to play. We have the qualifiers are in November, and the finals are in March, March yeah. 2013 of the WBC. So you're welcome to join us if you want to. Yeah, we could go uh, get some hits in at the plate. Sure. You guys know how to hit. We could try. <laughs> Yo, silly Sale, you finna strike out, cuz? <laughs> there it is. Oh, there it is. Not over the. <laughs> I'll come play. <laughs> oh! Ha! <laughs> I didn't even think they played baseball in Israel and then to actually find out they had a diamond here and to get the chance to actually play on it and swing a bat around, it was really fun. These guys are a lot better than me and, uh, you know, it's just, it's good to actually see them playing baseball. You know, this is America's sport, as we say, so 
You know, it's good to actually see it being played everywhere and uh, getting a chance to actually participate. Yo, I want to I wanna pitch. Huh? I think I can put a couple strikes in there. Going in there in about 75, 80. <laughs> 75, 80. 75. So, do you think I can get about 75, 80? Uh-huh. That is fast, right? Yeah! I thought it was a lot of fun. You know, I haven't played baseball in a while, and uh, just coming out here and doing it in Israel was really something special. But, uh, you know, it was a tough day, got hit a few times. Didn't really do too good at the plate, but uh, you know, that's, that's what makes people great. You gotta work on the tough days and make them better. So, you know, I'm gonna take this as a learning experience. A quick look at some of the experiences that Maccabi Haifa's foreign players enjoyed with their Israeli teammates here in Israel. By far the hardest, but the most meaningful. Inside Israeli basketball is brought to you by Israel. Seeing is belief. We thought it would be fun to give you a quick look at some of the experiences that Maccabi Haifa's foreign players enjoyed with their Israeli teammates here in Israel. So from Jerusalem and the Dead Sea to right here in Haifa, here's a glimpse of some memories of Israel that these players will carry with them for the rest of their lives. This is one of the best spots in Israel. We're going to go to the Rahbal. You know what's Rahbal? No. It's really nice where you go down to the caves. Really nice spot. Hey, they, they get caves, down there. caves, man. Now we are in Masada, as you see. It's high in the mountains. I'm going to meet you a friend of mine. His name is Avram. We're going to meet him right now. The English man, not meet you a friend of mine. Gonna, what? We're going to meet. We're going to meet a friend of mine. Oh, it's even thank. Jews, Muslims, all Hebrews. Together. All together. As you can see, something changed in the air, in the atmosphere. We're all surrounded with churches. We're in the Christian part of the city, the Christian quarter. Look around you. It's a whole different world in five minutes walk. Okay, Los, as I promised you, this is the city of Nazareth from above. You see the triangle here in the middle? This is the main uh, church of Nazareth. Christians from all over the world coming and visiting this church. Very, very important. Now, the special thing about Nazareth is you can see there are mosques for the Muslims' uh, religion. And just next to it, you can see many churches. I really think that this place is, is unique because we are living together peacefully. If you do the mud, your skin will be just beautiful. Yeah, that's it, man. Come, come, you have to put the mud on your face, man. What? But it's something called being dirty and unhealthy. No, this is, this is dirty and healthy. Okay, Carlos, as I promised you, we are going to the best candies place in Nazareth. Right. Nazareth is known for its candy, and this is the special knafe and special Arab sweet. Let's go and taste it. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> this is sweet, but it's good though. It's really good. Oh yeah. <laughs> Look at this. This looks crazy. Yo, hold up. My mother's calling me. So, Doc, we're going to tell her about the Sada. Yo, man. <laughs> man, you won't believe where I'm at. It's crazy out here. That's all for this season of Inside Israeli Basketball. Don't forget you can follow the Super League all year long on TriangleInternet.tv. So long, everyone.